Yeah, I'm, I'm Sebastian Wessels, and uh, the, the purpose of this video is the basic in introduction uh, to the machine shop, basic use and safety. Uh, myself and uh, Todd Franks, we are the shop captains in the shop, and we are doing this on video now for, uh, for ease of access and easier certification. Uh, the first part of the video will be just the basic safety, and in terms of the basic safety, I have to point myself out, uh, you know, in terms of what I'm wearing, but uh, you have to have closed toe shoes, you have to have uh, safety glasses, or if you use a a conventional glasses, you have to have side covers on the glasses. Uh, no regular or latex gloves, but the nitrile gloves are okay because they tear easily, they, they, they are not able to uh, when the machine catches them, they will tear and they will actually let you go. Uh, we also recommend that you wear nitrile gloves when the COVID-19 is ongoing because it, then you can easily sanitize your hands, but that is optional. Uh, hearing protection is available if you're doing something noisy. We do have hearing protection there on the tool wall. I'm not quite sure if it's in the picture, but it is available there. Uh, we also request that people wipe down touch surfaces with uh, this th the equipment that we have out here, and uh, we do have a, a bottle of, of uh, sanitizer that you could use for that purpose, all the touch and handling surface. Do not use that on any ways of machines because it's corrosive, only on where your hands are actually touching. Uh, we have a fire extinguisher and fire alarm. The fire extinguisher is in the corner over there, the fire alarm as well. We will cover that in a later video and show it on top of this. Uh, no alcohol or drug use is allowed in the, in the shop. If you are intoxicated or uh, have used medication prescription that impairs your ability to think clear and be safe, uh, do not use the shop. The areas in front of the breaker box uh, over there, we'll cover that in a picture just now, in front of the breaker box and the floor areas actually marked should be kept clear. Uh, so that is co fire code uh, for accessibility and to be able to uh, get to that equipment. We have hair nets, nets if you've got long hair um, on the shelf over here. Uh, it's a box of hair ties if you need to tie your hair. Uh, we do have a first aid kit on the wall by the door. Uh, persons under 16 years of age need to be accompanied by a parent. If something is unusual, or, and it sounds, it doesn't sound right, and you're concerned about the actual operation of the piece of equipment, stop using it immediately, go to the front office, collect a red tag, and tie a red tag to it, and we will, and notify us in some way, like on the Slack channel. Um, I didn't mention that in the opening, but one of the best ways to uh, contact the, the shop captains is to use the machine shop Slack channel. So notify us in the Slack channel if there's something wrong, if you've got any concerns, if you've got questions, that is the best way to contact us. The, uh, the same thing goes for damaged tools. If you damage something, um, you are actually responsible for the cost of damaged tools. But in, even so, the more important thing is to report it to us so that we know what happened, that we can check the peripheral equipment to see that it was only what you think is damage is damage, there might not be un some underlying issues or underlying damage that is not visible. So please report that, come clean. The important thing is to come clean, not to kind of hide the stuff away and try and get away with it. Uh, the shop is a shared space, so please be courteous to other users, uh, especially during COVID, people are get nervous about other people not wearing masks, and by the way, uh, we are being safe here. I'm just not wearing a mask so people can see my face and know what I look like. But if you're in the shop, you should be wearing a mask uh, and also adhere to the current COVID restrictions. Uh, the, uh, also clean up after yourself if you're done. Please sweep up and not only sweep up what you've done, uh, but also sweep a little bit wider. If you all try and clean up a little bit more than what we've actually, uh, the, the amount of dirt that we created, we will, the shop will be superb and clean. So just clean a little bit wider. The other reason for that is that if you walk around, you simply drag all these chips all over the place. So you always actually, you spread your dirt a little bit wider than you might be thinking. So please help us out and clean that up as best as you can. 
Uh, no wood cutting is allowed in the shop. Not only does wood create a lot of dust that is difficult to clean up, but that, that dust kind of mi mixes with the oil and you get this kind of goo, so, and it becomes corrosive. So if you want to do wood cutting, please do that in the wood shop. Plastic is okay though. Plastic, Teflon, all kinds of stuff like that is okay. And of course, all the various metals like aluminum, steel, whatever you can use on steel equipment is okay in the wood shop. And then uh, I also wanted to address the donation box. Uh, we've got a donation box at the front. We will show that also. Uh, the donation box is for the upkeep of the shop and the improvement of the shop. Your, your basic membership fees covers the utilities, it covers the, uh, the building itself, the mortgage that we pay on the building, but the shop uh, is run as, as a budget and we have to make that budget every year and we need the income from the shop, whether it's classes or donations, we need that to be able to replenish all the consumables and we also need that to be able to improve the shop. So please consider making donations. We've got a basic uh, suggestion if you're unsure about it, uh, $2 an hour, $5 a day, $20 a month. So if you're gonna be working a lot, a lot this month, it's a lot easier just to do the $20. I'm Todd Franks, I'm one of the uh, co-captains here in the machine shop. I uh, just wanted to point out here in the corner is the fire extinguisher and the pole alarm for the, for the fire alarm. Over here is the uh, thermostat for the shop. Uh, the heat does cycle on and off. Um, there, there is a cool down period during the heat cycle um, after the burner shuts off, so it may blow a little bit of cold air, but don't be concerned about that. The, the heater is working. Um, in the corner behind the stock is the switch to turn off the, uh, the heater. Um, if it's not working, you know, I would check that also. Um, in the summer months, we have a swamp cooler that blows air into the shop. Uh, the control for that is in the, uh, um, the pottery shop, and we'll sh insert a picture of that later. Okay, so we're in the drill press area now. The drill press are available to, uh, to a lot of people out here, but we still want you to be certified and checked out and all of that. And that's what this video is all about. So the drill press is pretty easy to use. You can just turn it on and off up here. It's got a lever at the back, we, which you could uh, you loosen the motor at the back with the two screws on both sides. You can move it back and forth, uh, and that will allow you to get slack on the, on the belt so you can change the belt. In the lid itself, uh, there's a, a detailed description of what speed you can get. And uh, uh, then of course there's a clamp here, and down there is kind of a cross vise, the standard vise that most people use, and you've got the height adjustment here. Uh, that power, this runs off the standard 120 volts, and it's always powered, unlike the other equipment which runs off three phase power. Over here we have two grinders. Uh, the, these grinders are only for tool making machine shop stuff only. So no walking with a long piece of steel that you wanted to grind off. That's what the back bay while welding is for. In here, we're making tools, and uh, the grinders are actually for making tools and tool steel. Uh, this machine over here is actually pr uh, powered by three phase, so you won't be able to turn it on unless you've got certification to be able to use those machines. And generally, it's not used, it's only basically used by the shop captains at this point in time for shopping tools. Uh, over there, we have the, uh, um, the collets for the MyTech, so that's part of the MyTech class. The drawers down here is actually pretty uh, useful. We've got all kinds of stuff in here that they're all labeled. The main thing that most people would be using out here is that we've got a bunch of drill bits. Uh, we've got taps, tap handles. The taps and the drill bits are generally not in a very good condition. I recommend that if you want to do stuff, decent work, get your own taps, get your own drill bits. But we do have some here that you can use in a pinch, just the quality is really not guaranteed because of the amount of use that they get. Uh, if you really feel like it, you can actually go and sharpen drills. We do have in this drawer over here, we have a drill doctor, and most people know how to use that. It's not a big deal, but uh, so if you want to sharpen your drills, you can use a drill doctor and sharpen the drills. We do have a fairly full set of drills up on the tool wall, which we will show in a video 
in a short while. Uh, I just wanted to point out the, the golden rule of everything in the machine shop, and I will probably come back to that later again, is that if something is hard to do, you're not doing it right. So always have a feel for the tool. Don't force stuff. Uh, generally stuff works easy. I wanted to cover the uh, chop saw that we have here in the shop. Um, it's good for cutting aluminum, brass, soft metals. Um, don't use it on steel. Um, that's mainly for blade life. Um, the blade will last, last a lot longer if we just use soft metals. Um, when you're done, make sure you clean up after yourself. Chips obviously get everywhere. Um, we also have a bandsaw here in the shop. Um, it's underpowered. Um, the blade isn't always the sharpest at times, so for the most part, it's only useful for uh, plastics. Um, up here on the uh, tool wall, there is a stick that you know you should use for uh, lubricating the uh, the blade. Um, also, wanted to cover the tool wall. Um, you know, we have various tools here: screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, files. Um, if you're going to use Anything from here, let's just keep it organized, make sure things get back in the right place um, so that it's uh, friendly for the next user. Um, there is an outlet here um, that you should use only, this is the only place you should plug the shop back into. Um, there are outlets on the lays and the, and the mills. Those are only meant for low power, things like DROs. Um, they are not, the circuit breaker can't handle the back, so please only plug in shop back here. This is our bending brick. It's a very useful wide bending brick. It does uh, a shear at the bottom, bending at the top, and the very top part is actually for rolling. Uh, the machine has got a separate certification class, so just please do not barge in and just use it. Uh, make sure that you've done the certification class so you can safely operate it, both for the machine and for yourself. Uh, the certification list is at the back of the, on the wall. Those are the people that's going to be certified. Okay, this is the tool cart, and the stuff that's on the tool cart is mainly used for the two Bridgeport machines. But you've got the collets over there, a bunch of cutters, and uh, a rotary table. Uh, this cabinet itself is also mainly machine tools, so it is not available to general use. If you're doing the Bridgeport classes or the lathe classes, we'll go into a lot of detail and discuss you know, what is usable here. But uh, like I said, no general use. Wanted to cover the uh, stock that we have available for general use. Um, down here on the, in the corner, we have a lot of things that are labeled. Um, you know, this was labeled 88 cents per inch. So if you do whack off a piece and use it, please make a donation. Um, the rest of the shelf, um, the, you know, things are not necessarily labeled. Um, if you do use something from the shelf, um, you know, just make your best guess of what it's worth and make a donation. Um, please only use things on the shelves that are labeled stock. Um, anything that's not on that shelf is reserved for shop captain use. Oh, and uh, also wanted to point out, we can this out. Also wanted to point out here in the corner um, behind the stock is the switch for the uh, heater in the machine shop. When you're done working, please clean up. It is nice to walk into a clean shop and everybody wants that, so let's please all do our part and clean up. One of the best and easiest ways to clean up is to actually use a broom. We've got a couple of brooms here, two with a little a dust pan, and the easiest way would be to use the broom and bring all your, your shavings and cuttings and stuff into one place so you can then vacuum it up. Well, first of all, the bigger pieces, just uh, scoop them up with a, with a little dust pan, throw them out, and then the rest, you can simply use the vacuum for that. Uh, as we, we might have touched on this earlier, but I want to say again, this is the only place where the vacuum can be plugged in. Uh, the other outlets are low power outlets for DROs and stuff like that. So the vacuum always gets plugged in over here. If you use the vacuum, just test, test it for suction. If you don't feel a lot of suction, please check that the hose is not clogged. It generally seems to clog right at the bend there close to the machine itself. Uh, currently, it's very nice and open, so there should be no issues. And also, the other thing to check, if it, doesn't, if it feels heavy 
or it, uh, like I said, the suction is not good, simply open up the machine and check it out from the inside. And it is actually pretty full now, so I'll go and open it, uh, clean it up. We do not have janitorial services in the machine shop. So all the cleaning has to be done by the users of the machine shop. So please help us out, do your part, and everybody's got a nice and clean shop.